Interview with BIGD, from Limey Kennels. Hello. It's an honor to give an interview to Pit Master Magazine. I will try to remember all the details and how they really were. I hope my memory doesn't fail me. I also want to say that Limey Kennels, it's not just me. We've always had more than one player, and all of our successes are team successes. My partners prefer to stay in the background. They don't seek recognition, and they don't record their struggles. They don't care about that. I will answer to your questions. But again, I'm not the only one who has made Limey Kennels a success. Traditional question, how long have you been in the fight? I started to get interested in fighting in 1983, and I got my first bulldog in 1984. He was the grandson of champion Spike of Limey. Before that, I had a bull terrier, and I thought he was a real fighting dog. Once in the park, we found a real black devil. His owner asked, Hi guys, what do you have there? So we replied, That's a real fighting dog. He smiled, and asked, Want to try it? I let Bull fight that black dog. I didn't even have time to understand, I already had to get my supposed fighting dog. I remember thinking, God, what a dog I bought. From that moment on, my heart was given to the pit bulldog. But Limey Kennels has been around since 1982. The Limey Kennels is based on the plumber's line from the champion alligator. But B.I.G.D., why did you choose this dog? I became a great friend of the man I met in the park. On the same day, we scored a rolla against a dog from the lineage, BLIO with Hank. We put against him a dog, brother of champion Spike, called Sep. It was a spectacular fight, and a difficult one, which lasted 40 minutes. The Sep worked a lot of bite on the shoulder and chest. The dog Bolio defended well, working on the head. This battle impressed me a lot. Despite the dog's advantage bullying with Hank. I preferred the Black Devils from the Alligator Champion line. Champion Spike, Champion Alligator 2, Champion Nelson Rom, Champion Ucky, Champion Candy, Champion Smuggler, Champion Smikey, Nellis Rom, Tug Rom. Continue this list. Okay. We also have the Dutch champion, and the Nasher champion. And our friends at East End Kennels also have excellent dogs from our breeding. Like, champion Birdie, grand champion Bella, and grand champion Mura. If I remember, of all our titled dogs, this list will be long. East End Kennels played a big part in breeding our champions. I am, Second Generation Limey Kennels Goldie, JB and Mr. Fritz Jansen were the ones who created our first champions. These are the real dogmans of origin from the Limey Kennels team. In the beginning, they only let me take out the dog's feces. Gradually, I became a member of the team. And I started learning from them everything a player needs to know. I believe that the best champions were the ones that passed through my hands. The Alligator Champion, the UKKIE Champion. This bitch belonged to my wife. The two that helped me the most were Terry Goldie and Dirty Harry. Goldie is my partner, along with JB and Imperial Walker. Goldie gave me Scepter, and now he's my advisor when I need him. In the photo, you are next to the champion alligator from Limey. I know that the alligator was the only one in Europe that managed to win the grand champion Sonny. 
I know you won $30,000 in that battle. Tell me more about this fight. The history of this fight is described in detail in some magazines. It's been so long, I don't even remember, but I'll try. Champion Sonny won two fights in just 12 minutes, up to fights lasting 3 hours and 20 minutes. I saw these fights personally, we were not sure of victory. And when we scheduled the fight, we invited several dogmens from all over the world. So that there was no doubt about our dog after the fight. Sonny never turned its head and body, avoiding the opponent. And at scratch, he also never even thought about refusing to get back into the fight. In this fight, Alligator got a good grip on Sonny's throat. He started to shake it so hard that Sonny started to choke. So the dog Sonny avoided his opponent for the first time. I think it was the first time that Sonny was really beaten in his life. The alligator was very fast, and he was the copy of his great-grandfather, the champion alligator, from Plumbers. Our alligator dominated the fight, attacking hard, the chest, throat and shoulders. All Sonny could do was defend itself, but its defense didn't work against alligator. I remember asking, for the Ron of you plus S kennels. What do you think? And he replied, B-I-G-D, that Sonny's fighting style, don't celebrate victory, ahead of time. Then I asked the same thing, to Ben V. Houghton, from Saint. Benedict Kennels, who created the bloodline, Dolan of St. After 40 minutes of fighting, Alligator got a little tired, and Sonny started working. And Ron, from U plus S said, CBIGD, I was right. And he placed a bet against Alligator, and my partners took it immediately. In less than five minutes, Alligator recovered and finished off Sonny. At the one hour and one minute mark, Sonny, heard the count, and didn't come out of the corner, hundreds of people, watched in silence. The alligator, screaming like crazy in the other corner, wanting to continue the fight, but the fight was over. Some tried to get Sonny back into the fight, but they weren't successful. Sonny was an excellent fighting dog, he won five fights. After that fight, we approached Ron, from U plus S. We wanted to schedule a fight, alligator against, their dog, Champion Spice. But, they admitted, their dog couldn't defeat the alligator. And they refused to schedule the fight. After a while, the Champion Spice, won the ST's dog. Benedict and Farmer Boys, the Rebel Dog. Rebel then lost to Champion Alligator at the 1 hour and 7 minute mark. This fight against them was one of the hardest fights ever. After that fight, Rebel became a shadow. But that story, I will gladly tell later. Which of your dogs is your favorite? Which one do you think is better? It's because? It's not easy to answer this question. Because most of our dogs are excellent. And I consider some of them far superior to many of our champions and great champions. The title of champion, or grand champion. It doesn't mean that the dog will be a good producer. Before, my favorites were Fatso, Tusker, Crippen and Alligator. Today it is, Magic, which is one of our breeders. And the female Bad Billy, Flyer Fox and Crazy Kate. These bitches, tend to pass, superior dogs in competition, even better than our males. We also have a live dog that was supposed to be dead. Terror, twice winner of combat, and one defeat, 
proving the gameness. I have yet to see a live bulldog, who fought like terror. Much can be said about his fight, but that will be done at another time. Returning to the subject of favorites, I can't forget about the dog, Blondie. Blondie was a terrible bitch, with a destructive bite. Goldie and JB, along with Mr. Bulldog, pitted Blondie against Sandry. Both had the same devastating bite. Sandry, is a creation of the alligator lineage with Mayfield. And Blondie, was from the origin of our champion, Spike. In the fight in 15 minutes, the two dogs, broke, the paws and the mandibles, of the other. The fight lasted 50 minutes, and Blondie won. Believe me, this fight was one of the most violent in history. But that too is another story. Goldie and JB said they had never seen anything like it in their lives. Two Shredder Bitches We had a bitch like Blondie, daughter of Champion Spike, with the female Tugrom. This bitch's name was Spook, but Blondie was even better. Who are your key producers? Definitely the Dog Terror, Magic and Gronos. But the most reliable one, which I would call ours, is Crippen. He is the only living dog from the legendary cross between the Nellis dog and the female TUG. We believe he will not live for another year. But his sperm is still active. The Crippen was crossed only three times. But the result was excellent. It couldn't be different, the son of champion Spike, Nellis Ram, has the greatest genetic potential. Nellis is the father of six champions and two dogs with the title of Ram. And all that, it was like eleven or twelve matings, I don't remember exactly. Also born, quite a few dogs with one win, and with two wins. He was a dog, who had golden eyes. One day, I will write about him. Anyway, we never had problems with breeders. All of our dogs are purebred and of high quality. In your opinion, who is the best breeder of alligator dogs today? It's a tricky question but I'll answer it. The best alligator breeder today is us at Limey Kennel. I am not diminishing the achievements of the master, Mr. Gary Hammonds. I consider him as the best creator of all time. But the Limey Kennel has achieved great results. We work with the dogs from Mr. Gary Hammonds. But we never had more than 15 to 18 dogs at the same time. And with three dogs, Champion Spike, Nellis Rom and Tug Rom, they gave the fight 13 champions. And two dogs, which became Rom, by mating only, with 12 females. From these crosses, two great champions were born, and 12 champions. We cannot forget that we do not have the same capacity as the dogmen of the USA. They can keep 200 dogs at the same time. And so they manage to make many matings to sell. And we only bred dogs when we were in need of puppies. For example, our champion alligator was mated only once. Champion smuggler mated with two to three females, and two champions were born. His sister, Champion Dutch, was bred only once, and two Rom dogs were born. The Prudens, mated twice, and high-quality dogs were born. I believe these results are because all our dogs are tested. Everyone is commenting that Park Sun Rom is the best sire of the alligator champion bloodline. What do you think? I don't know how many matings he made. But I can say that, our dog, Champion Candy. 
Who is the daughter of, Park Sun Ram, is. I'm even uncomfortable admitting it, but this one really is. It's one of the best combat vehicles I've ever seen in person. I heard that her brother, the champion OAK. He is also one of the best. But if I had to choose, I would choose mine first. Because mine, I know well. Do you currently have dogs from the Park Sun Ram dog? Yes, I have his daughter, Champion Candy. And I also have the blood of the dog Park Sun, with Sarah Bell, in several dogs. Like the famous Miss Prance by Bay State Kennels. We experiment, that blood, with our dogs. This mating gave us a strong type of dog. But the percentage of gameness decreased so I crossed it again, in my dogs, and the result was excellent. Gronos is three quarters Crippen, and one quarter Park Sun with Sarah Bell. The Gronos, it's really good, I love it, I see the Crippen in it. You are having a lot of success with the alligator dogs. Tell us about the special and distinctive characteristics of this lineage. Our first alligator dogs were very strong and rough. They had a style of attack, intensity, and devastating bite. Basically, they were gameless dogs, dogs that would die in the fight. But in my opinion, they were too direct. When we crossed with TUG, we lost the bite, but our dogs started to have a varied fighting style. We regard this breed as a separate branch of the main lineage of Hammond's dogs. Which combinations with the alligator line are the most popular in Europe? The combination of alligator with red baron tonka. Or the combination of alligator with ELI? That alligator cross with ELI that Gary Hammonds did is phenomenal. They are excellent, that's how Champion Spike, from Limey Kennels, was born. And the crossing between Nellis, with TUG, which we use ourselves, and with great success. MR. Bulldog, tried to repeat, he used a high percentage of Tombstone with Red Baby. But the strength quality of that combination was not in them. The blood of Curtis Fox Jr., who was the father of Tug Rom and son of Petronelli Fox. Fox was the litter brother of the grand champion Boomerang. And that was Mr. Bulldog's mistake, he thought it was the same as Tug's. But TUG, it was Tombstone with Red Baby, that's what made our dogs high quality. Plus the main thing, Fox Blood, which was heavy in the dog lineage, Carver Pistol, Miss Spike Rom and Cotton Bullet. And Mr. Bulldog, used Champion Willie Birch. He also used Pacman, Tonka's twin son. Pacman was Tonka crossed with Blondie. At the top of the pedigree, Tonka, and at the bottom, the grand champion Berta. But almost all the dogs from this cross were crossbreeds. With the exception of two-thirds of them. And those two-thirds of good dogs, Mr. Bulldog, returned to our dogs. He crossed with dogs from the shed, Nellis with TUG, and gave a phenomenal result. An example is, Sarah once victorious in combat. She defeated, the three-time champion, and litter sister, of the great champion Tornado. She is also the sister of champion Jocker, and champion Spice. And they were, direct descendants, of the champion Booger Ram of Jeru. The same combination of this blood also generated Dolly, a two-time winner. It also generated Ruby, twice winner, she is from my friend, Mel from Lionheart Kennels. When Dolly, crossed with an ELI, with Red. 
The result was a bitch, which she lost in 4 hours and 48 minutes. A dead game bitch, a pure dog, from the Nella Strand, with T.U.G. I tried a cross between Champion Ben, which is of origin, Champion Buck, from Anderson, and Pepper, from Bruant. Then I had the opportunity to buy Ben, for $200. But I didn't have the space, so I helped Ben's owners sell him. They sold Ben to my friend from ST. Benedict Kennel. I had three dogs from the Ben side, and they were all good bulldogs, they were all fighters. Ben was a pure Tonka with Red Baron, who was a six-time combat winner. I believe the best dogs to use to get a Red Baron with Tonka. It's crossing alligator dogs with a dog alligator with ELI. That's how Mr. Hammonds gave birth to Limey's champion Candy. She is the daughter of Park's son from Hammonds. The Park's son Rom is 70% alligator and has blood from Stompanato Rom from Carver. Stompanato, which is almost a pure ELI. At the bottom of the pedigree, champion Candy is Red Baron with Tonka. If you look at Candy's pedigree, you will see that she is a pure alligator. She is seven times the Susan Renee of Flotty, who is the litter sister of Alligator. Barau Vermelho is the grandson of Susan Renee. But I think purebred dogs, barren with Tonka, are dogs that fight a lot, but lack power in the mouth, so they need to be crossed, with Alligator, and with Alligator with ELI. What does the clean Alligator expression mean? Do you have purebred alligator dogs? Therefore, first of all, we must understand that there are no alligator dogs, purer than the alligator itself. All we have to do is get as close to the alligator. And I hope that our path in creating this lineage is the cleanest in the world. Our dogs are typical alligator, most are black in color, they have long legs. That is, in general all appearance, and also quality of work, which are already essential, the alligator lineage. And I assure you that our dogs are not worse than the dogs, Hammonds, which have 15 or 20 times the alligator in their pedigree. We make our creation, with emphasis on the type, taking into account, as much the appearance, as the qualities, of fight. If the dog has a pedigree, only 25 to 30 percent alligator, but he is a typical representative of the lineage. We'd rather use him than a dog that has 75 percent alligator, but he's not a typical alligator. In other words, a dog with 30 percent alligator blood may be purer than a dog with 75 percent alligator blood. I'm sure pedigree is important. But if there hasn't been a dog in the last four generations that looks like the alligator, it's not worth it. The technique we use in reproduction is not used by many. Most likely, they do not understand simple things. An example. Your mother says, boy, you look like your grandfather. She meant that you resemble each other in character and appearance. And you only have 25% of your grandfather's genes. But really, in life you are 80% of what you look like and what your character is. It's the same with bulldogs, so I can answer your question. And I can say that yes, we have alligator dogs, purebred. For example, one of them is magic, he is a typical alligator dog. Perhaps he will become our main breeder. I also like to add dogs to our main blood, dogs that are also typical. I like to use ELI blood through Nigerino. 
Now we are merging magic with Nijirino. I think this crossing will bear excellent fruit over the next 10 years. Many people do not believe in this type of creation. But, we do it freely, with very inbred dogs, one of which is our magic. Is it possible to determine the future quality of a dog by its behavior when it is still a puppy? There are no guarantees how the PUP will behave. I always like the middle ground, that is. The puppy should not be the biggest or the smallest, it should not be the fastest or the slowest. But, again, there is no guarantee that your choice of puppy will be successful. Of course, you can learn to choose. But this only happens with people who know the four generations of the puppy. She creates it herself for 20 years. So you can already use your knowledge and intuition when choosing puppies for your kennel. Well okay. We haven't sold puppies for 16 years, but soon we will have two litters. These will be the first puppies available. We are thinking of mating a terror dog with PUP, with A, magic, with champion candy. But these puppies will not be sold in Western Europe, nor in North America. Let's not choose anything for us. Well, I repeat, these are the first dogs we are going to sell. And we want to show the best of our lineage. That we have accumulated over the years of existence of Limey Kennels. Why are alligator dogs so famous? Tell some of its typical features. A good and typical alligator dog has all the qualities to win at a high level. They are very talented fighters, they are strong physically, and they bite very hard. But the quality I most appreciate about this lineage is its strength, both physical and psychological. Most dogs of other bloodlines take a year to recover from fighting. Most dogs of other bloodlines do not recover from a fight for a year. Alligator will be up and running looking ready for another fight two to three weeks after the fight. But your psychology won't be ready for that even after six months. We must not forget that the mental and physical state are not the same thing. And most people fail to understand why their dogs showed such gameness in a tough two-hour fight. And six months later, they stopped for no reason. But that's the reason, the reason is, your dogs haven't recovered from the fight. And I believe that the psychological strength of the alligator bloodline is the biggest advantage over other dog bloodlines. This feature, from the line of alligator dogs. It gives a condition, that they can participate, of up to three fights in the year. But we can't forget that they are dogs, and they have limits. We made a mistake, with one of our best dogs. The champion Nasher, he was the result of crossing Nellis, with the female TUG. We rolled it six times in less than two months. And then we put it, in four fights, in less than three months. So, in the fourth fight, he fought on the asphalt. His opponent was the champion Belker, Nasher didn't come back to fight, in the scratch at 36 minutes. He wasn't a stray, he was an excellent fighting dog. But we gave him a lot of work, in less than two years, and that broke him. The history of Nasher, was our biggest mistake. So, I repeat, a good alligator lineage dog has everything to win. Game, speed, bite and talent, but it is mainly valued for its advantage over other lines, for its strength. What is the best age to start with dogs, alligator? That is, dogs of this lineage, are they late? Or are they precocious? 
Okay, I understand your question. I think there is no precise definition, as in other lines. Some can start early, some start as early as age two, and some start after age two. If the dog starts at two years old or more, it will make no difference to its quality. About our dogs, I can say that on our side of the lineage, alligator. Females always start before males, some at one year and two months old, others at one year and four months old. We test all of our dogs, for just three to five minutes. If one of them doesn't want to fight, we wait until the age of two, or more. The peak occurs at three years old, up to five years old. Therefore, by this age you will have enough time. Alligator dogs, can they win another top-notch alligator dog? Is it easy to beat an alligator dog? In answer to your question, I can only talk about our dogs, from the alligator lineage. I can say that we rarely lose. And when we lose, it is unlikely that the dog that won ours will be able to continue his career in the fight. Here in our region, in Europe. The dog men say, if you don't win, the limey dogs, within 30 minutes. Or if your dog is not a dog that dominates the fight, you have no chance of winning. And I agree with them. Who do you consider to be the best fighting dog of the alligator bloodline? Oh, that's a tough question. Every dog that is good has its own special trait. Even more so when it comes to dogs, from alligator origin. But analyzing the modern ones, I think the bitch, bad bully, and his sister Firefox. The two, I consider, bulldog of high quality. I suggested a battle, between bad bully, against the Russian champion, bad rosemary, from Alblazin. We gave the owner of bad rosemary an advantage of two pounds to bring her to us. Because the bad bully is a crazy bitch, and we couldn't take her. But Rosemary's owner, put her with a dog, Yugoslavian. I watched a video, of one of Rosemary's fights. She had a strong bite. But I think bad bully would have beaten her in 40 minutes or so, but that's just my opinion. Rosemary, had a bite, devastating. But to use it, to knock out the bad bully, she would need space. Our bad bully, always dominated the fights, she always fought, against potent biters. But none of them managed to use her main weapon. She dominated, and exhausted them all, at a frantic pace. Bad bully's sister, Firefox. One in Germany, Holly a bitch twice winner. Holly won the first fight, in 18 minutes, over the champion, Color Kennels. And the second fight, she won over Samart and Finkel Winkle Kennel, with the bitch petticoat. Which was the winner, and favorite of the Samart Kennel. But Holly ruined Samart's favorite in 50 minutes. Holly also did a test with the great champion Candy. Candy, in 12 minutes, almost died in the ring. But, it was being analyzed, and it was withdrawn. I'm telling this, so people can have an idea of the quality of the dog that our Firefox won. When we arrived at the scene of the fight, we discovered that Holly was heavier than our dog. She was, with 1 kilo and 200 grams, more. We were advised to collect the fine and go home, but we wanted to fight. They said we were crazy, but we knew Firefox was in great shape. Before the fight, Firefox had already gone through a test against a female dog with the same style as Holly, only with a weaker bite. 
We took the fine, and signed a contract, with the same amount. We decided to see what would happen, and if in 15 minutes Firefox didn't start dominating the fight. Let's get her, because Holly, has a weight advantage, 1 kilo, and 200 grams. To everyone's surprise, Firefox was declared the winner in 1 hour and 16 minutes. But the fight was already won, since the 40 minutes. Holly turned out to be a bitch, dead set. But the guys didn't believe what they were seeing. I asked them. Why aren't you filming Holly? And they replied. Why should we film? So I said, something they probably weren't seeing. Why is Holly dying? Wasn't it a fun story? The kind that sometimes happens in combat. Holly was the daughter of Champion Chewie, a nine-time combat winner. One of the dogs, Untouchables and Midnight Junior by Rodriguez. Everyone, including FWK, has admitted that Firefox is the best thing they've ever seen in combat. But I believe her sister, the bad bully, was just as good, if not better. Firefox was undoubtedly smarter. But the bad bully could take her enemy, death, with her attack. It turned a square into a war territory. What is the shortest fight, and the longest fight, of your combinations with alligator dogs? My shortest fight was 30 minutes against FWK. That's been a long time. After that, my vet said, for me not to use it, plus dexamethasone. After that, I never lost a fight with less than an hour. My longest fight lasted two hours. But if we talk about our team as a whole, the longest fight, Limey Kennels. It was a fight that lasted two hours and forty minutes. If we talk about dogs, the alligator lineage, our side. The longest was the dog fight, which was born, in the mating of Nellis, with T.U.G. This fight lasted 4 hours and 48 minutes. And the shortest fight, Limey Kennels, was the champion, UKKIE. The UKKIE belonged to my wife, and she killed her opponent inside the ring in 11 minutes and 21 seconds. UKKIE's longest match lasted 30 minutes. It's hard to remember them all now. Our Fatso, lost to you plus S, with Grand Champion Nikki, in 3 hours and 6 minutes. Although the report states, 2 hours, and 58 minutes. The fight actually lasted, 3 hours and 6 minutes. Currently, who do you consider to be the best breeder, trainer and trainer of alligator dogs? Myself. Mr. B.I.G.D., thanks for your time, to Pitmaster readers. I hope you like it. I wish you good luck with your hard work. Thank you very much. I want to say that this is the first interview that Limey Kennels grants to a magazine. For Russia, we make this exception. We wish the dogmen success, and we thank the Pitmaster. I wish you good luck. Thanks to the team at Limey Kennels. And to all Russian dogmen. That was the interview with Mr. B.I.G.D. from Limey Kennels. Subscribe so you don't miss the next videos. My name is Rodolfo Luis and this was another video. Video created by Pels Rustic Kennel.